saw the flavor clocks. No doubt, it be the tip. Yeah, curly head kid. Yo, 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 for gators to blazers, low phase and raises. The big dick saloon, I contact the wound of black Asian. Wrist location keeps circulating. My wonder twin power activates shit on this nation. Our lost scene represent the gummy with the green. Who walk me, stand up on your block and burn a bean. Sit Valentine looking at that bitch while behind. The thing that's fucking up a grill is that swine. To turn around, take my last pull off the L. These niggas up the block keep looking at me well. But they want the jewel, it ain't hard to tell. I recognize a face, he acting like Denzel. Fuck him, I want the check mode for a chop. Want it for on the sides like fake rough top Now it's a whole new ball game Strategic mind frame My dialogue's rebellious Rain and rain supreme Glass shattering like To kill on a ninja bike Show my love to the guard He peeled out and made a right <laughs> Running through your dance hall gunning Like Lee Harvey, y'all's wall stunning Slapping MCs with summons for pumping That water down substance Beat this slug stinger creeping Making moves like crying Freeman Prince of Thieves, Earth Third Seed Heavyweight like Golden Fleeces Homicide stroll the streets in blue caprices Looking for thugs holding heat in the city beef Got me plotting trilogy To dispose enemy sneak attacks I'm beyond and above that Seen that, done that, respect black I catch a slug to your hard hat Lounging in the Everglades Surfing the airwave Catch a buck fifty with the razor blade swiftly Shallon cats be shysty Strictly drunk off the Irish whistle And you walking down the street With your box in your head And you playing the music of the Wu-Tang Clan And you hear Iron Man On your radio rapping yeah. Your beats start to yeah. stand scan And your fuck. hands start to clapping Rest your headpiece on this one, son, cough up a lung Sleeping on my murderous type ones that get you done I'm looking at these cutthroat kids and how they live It's like we was partners in spades and you renege Can't fuck with no nigga like that, they get me jacked Or sent back, meaning whole life fade to black Whole seven and a half upright and roll tight Fool me once but can't fool me twice I'm 25 to life on this mic device I'm nothing nice, a mixture of long wild rice and no spice Inflicted, rap addicted, track I stick it Flip it, daddy long dick it, slide a little bit beyond twisted Mind and stitches You thought weak but meant wicked Niggas choke off my second hand smoke lifted Every day is like my birthday You're mad gifted Dead calm Hit me with the 18 bronze Boot upon About to blow like napalm Go for your arm Prepare for the warfare Or buy a share Of what the fuck we dealing with Yeah Johnny about to go there Eat another year Bust a shot for my sons That didn't make it here I really would wish I could trade places with them because I'm sure they wouldn't be living like here. Well, son, I'll tell you. 
Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks on it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor. Bare. The railroad bridge is a sad song in the air. The railroad bridge is a sad song in the air. Every time the trains pass, I wants to go somewhere. Sure, a road helps all of us. White folks ride, and I get to see them ride. I ain't never seen nobody ride so fine before. Hey, buddy, look at me. Do you like the people on that train? No. Why not? Because I don't have a chance to stop and talk to them or learn what, um, what do they think about me and what do I think about them. Do you, uh, what do you imagine they think about you? Nothing. They just go right back. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. That is my dream. They think, well, I think they think about, stay running around and say, see that boy there? Never make it. When I was young, I go to school, I do this, but they stay home. They don't go to school. They don't care. Maybe they're just arriving from another state or country. And maybe their state doesn't have that certain place that's here. I was born here, he said. Watched Harlem grow until colored folks spread from river to river across the middle of Manhattan. Out of Penn Station, dark tenth of a nation. Plains from Puerto Rico and holds of boats, Chico. Up from Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica. In buses marked New York, from Georgia, Florida, Louisiana. To Harlem, Brooklyn, the Bronx, but most of all to Harlem. Dusky sash across Manhattan. I've seen them come dark, wandering, wide-eyed, dreaming out of Penn Station. And I was to be small, I used to watch it all the time. I used to think they was dummies up there when I was real little. You know, I didn't know too, you know, I was about seven or eight. I had to watch it. I, I, I figured it was, you know, no real people in the, in the train, you know. I said to my baby, baby, take it slow. I can't, she said, I can't. I got to go. There's a certain amount of traveling in a dream deferred. I want the same thing they want, you know what I mean? You know, they got a good education, they had a chance, you know what I mean? They got a chance to get what they want. They had a, maybe a good background, you know what I mean? Their family probably had good money, you know? Help them on up, but like, we ain't got nothing, you know what I mean? We gotta come from scratch. I think their houses are like country houses with the tops are slanted like a triangle. And, there's, and they have a pool in the backyard where lots of children play at. Ours are made of bricks. Princess. They think about us, maybe we get out the slums. I figure they got a nice, you know, a nice home, their own home, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like houses, Long Island, nice houses, like that. I figure, you know, they living like that. Nice grass, nice yard, you know what I mean? Good fresh air, you know, that's where I figure they live, like that. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Some of them, 
look like gangsters to me. You know, they slow on the train. Some of them make faces at you and be looking up there, stick their tongue out you. No. They like just look mean, funny, ugly. I shall hate you like a dart of singing steel shot through still air at even time. Or solemnly, as pines are sober when they stand etched against the sky. Hating you shall be a game played with cool hands and slim fingers. Your heart will yearn for the lonely splendor of the pine tree, while rekindled fires in my eyes shall wound you like swift arrows. Memory will lay its hands upon your breast and you will understand my hatred. They all live on the same world, but they may live in different houses and different countries or states. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Usually they understand your question, understand your problems as soon as you tell them. But but usually you can't get to that person because they um they don't live in the same place that you live in. They just consider about their self while they're on the train. Maybe maybe they're concerned about their self getting on get getting to their destination safe. Maybe they're worried about their self. I dream a world where man no other will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its paths adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul, nor avarice blights our day. A world I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free, where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl attends the needs of all mankind. Of such, I dream, our world. Herzl Street. It's in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. Now, Herzl Street used to be a proud block of Jewish people who prospered as merchants up the street from here on Pitkin Avenue. Now, that was about five years ago. The Jews are all gone now, although their stores remain, and Herzl Street is another block in the ghetto. 
But it's really not just another block. It is one of the worst. Row upon row of abandoned buildings. The owners abandon them. The city ignores them. And the people in this block are left to live with them. Have you ever been in an abandoned building? I mean one that's been abandoned for months or perhaps years. But one that still contains the wastes of human life. Like this one. The junkies crawl around in here at night. And during the day, 300 to 400 youngsters on Herzl Street use it as a playground. And then every once in a while, somebody on Herzl Street gets damn tired of looking at it. And so they set fire to it. Fires and robberies, a daily occurrence in this block. Even the bread man gets robbed once a week. Just yesterday, I was in a... I was doing a stop, and uh, I noticed seven men by my truck. I stayed in the store because I figured it was going to be a holdup, so I called the cops, 911, and they told me to stay there until a patrol car comes. As I was waiting for the patrol car, these men walked in the store and put a knife to me and took my money. Now, how much money have you had stolen all together? Well, the first one was $183, the second one was $60, and the third one was $85. What did the police say about all this? Well, they're trying to find the guys, but uh, these people just, they crawl into the woodwork. What do you think about Herschel Street? I'll tell you, the truth, I don't think it's fit for a dog. Will it? The worst of Herschel Street sits between Sutter and Pitkin Avenues. 80% of the people living here are black and the rest are Puerto Rican. Many of the landlords have abandoned the entire place. The city says that Herzl Street is being considered for redevelopment under the Model Cities program. And the people who live here now once lived in places like Bedford-Stuyvesant and they came here to find that conditions are even worse. Rents are between 95 and $100 a month. However, when there is no landlord, there's usually no rent to pay. But, of course, there's also no heat in the winter and there's no water in the summer. There's only the stifling heat, the dirt, the rubble, and the frustration. There's more fear in a carrier going into a building than it was ten years ago. He doesn't know what's going to hit him. Ten years ago, it wasn't like that. It was very populated with 95% of them were Jewish people. The building in back of me was a temple for about 20 years. And the last four or five years ago, it was converted into a... Uh, Spanish uh, church. 13 years ago, or in the past, people just come here Saturday mornings for services. After services, they have an affair inside. It wasn't like it is today. The only thing I say, people would, might think an earthquake hit it. That's how bad it looks. Empty lots, garbage all over the neighborhood. On the lots, I mean. The streets are very filthy from day to day. That's the sound of broken glass under my feet. Just one of an awful lot of things that are broken down here, including hope. We, we are in an abandoned building because it's a symbol. It's a symbol of the whole area. The whole area has been abandoned. There are two things that strike you when you enter this building, which structurally, by the way, is still pretty sound. The way it is right now, and then, you have to imagine what it must have been like a long time ago, with curtains in all the windows and the glass where the glass was supposed to be. Smells of good food being cooked, polite conversation. Sights that many of these youngsters who are standing in these windowsills now never knew anything about. But Herzl Street is really a story more than just abandoned buildings. It is also a story of people, abandoned people. That's our pool. We got one on every block. They run like that. <laughs> you know, right outside the door, out the house, right into the pool. 
You don't have to write a little bit of dirt in there, but that's okay. That's the only way you keep cool here in the ghetto. In a neighborhood like this, if the children don't see nothing but this, then they wouldn't know whether there's anything better in life to see. Because all the children live in the same environment, from one block after another. So that's all they ever know. They grow up born in these neighborhoods and they grow up in them, so how would they know if there's any better things in life? They don't. I have four youngsters, and the first thought that occurred to me is, what would my wife think? How would she react if her kids had to come in here and played in here and brought that awful, suffocating, nauseating odor home with them on their clothes? Because that's what happens here. When the Jews were here, they had the same homes and the same houses 10 years ago. The place wasn't dirty like this. As the people move in, they make it dirty themselves. I can't just blame. I just I can't just blame it on you know the system. A lot of people say it's whitey system. It's whitey system. Mm -hmm. You know, why you don't tell you to take garbage and throw it in the street? You know, disregard. Let your children play all out here, dirty the place up, pee in the hallway, sit on the steps, drink wine, carry it all in the streets. You know, so it's sick. Hey, Marshall. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors involved. Well, listen, I don't want to live this way. I'd rather have somebody to do the service, but if you don't know about to do it, what are we supposed to do? Just banish? You got no place to go. And everywhere you go, if you got children, the landlord don't want no children. You go in a decent neighborhood and tell the man you got six children, he can have seven rooms. He don't want two children in the seven rooms. I would like for my children to know something better in life, because this is a world of betterment. People actually own this property, but the owners have disappeared. It should be torn down, it should be condemned. Something should be done with it, but it shouldn't be left the way it is now. So the city is derelict, it's been ignored. And yet, uh, we were talking before, I dare say, that should something be done with this area, should some bulldozer suddenly show up one morning to clean the area out, that the owners would appear like magic to put claim to their property. But right now, nobody wants it, just the kids. It's sort of the... Uh, Herschel Street Recreational Area. Just before we came into this wreck, I was down on the sidewalk below talking with a group of youngsters who play in here, and something came fluttering down, and one of the youngsters looked up and said, hey, look, it's a butterfly. And his companion turned and said, no, man, it's no butterfly, it's just a piece of paper.
this is my house. This is where I live. A few of my friends live in this house. Some are my sister's friends and some are my friends. Here's the lot that I, that I was hoping that they'd make into a playground, but actually they didn't. That lot looks terrible, and they haven't done a thing about it. Right now, I see the school, and um, the school is nice, but there's a few people in, in the school that's bad. The name of the boy I had filmed was, his name was Marshall, and me and him and I, we had a few disruptions. When I used to call him names, he usually calls me names too. He called me Big Head. Usually I think it's fun to be a policeman because they wear nice uni uniforms, and they have a gun and a blackjack, and, and they have cars and the things that you could give somebody a ticket with. While I was filming these, this building, I, I saw a man, and I asked him, what do you like about this building? And he said that it was quiet, and there wasn't no, no drunk addicts or any policemen around. I heard some fire trucks and, um, I saw the firemen putting out some a fire from a mattress, and the the time I got to the mattress, the firemen had already put it out, and the firemen left. Couldn't you put that on the news? Oh, please. I have filmed Teresa, Dale, Burke, Carol. Cassie and Rosemary. Teresa, the one I gave the microphone to. She's like any normal girl. She plays hopscotch, <laughs> um, rope, double dutch. Usually she plays kickball. That's Yolanda. Um, <laughs> she's the smallest one. And that's Rosalie holding her. My mother is the best mother in the world. I say that things w wouldn't be the same without her. I like to move into the country because there's lots of trees and lots of bushes, and it's like nature made it to be. Central Park looks like the country, but it's not really. But it, it's not really the country. At Central Park, it's a big park, and you can climb trees and look at the squirrels and bird watch. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, go. Having friends is like making another brother out of that other person, or a sister, or anybody. It's fun to have a friend, a friend that you could trust, and a friend that, that will follow you until your days are done, and like that. I saw the policeman picking the man up and putting him on the bench. I don't know why, what happened to him. He asked me, was I filming him? And I said, yep, and he had said, thank you. The way he asked me is like that, um, like he really wanted, like he really wanted to be something, but he couldn't be it. I interviewed these two boys, and I asked them a few questions. First, I asked one of the boys, what was it like in the block that they live in? And so they say that their um, block wasn't too much complicated. And they said that, that, um, that, that you should, that three, three or two crimes had happened in their block, and they said that two people's houses was uh, was held up and somebody stole something in their house. The world of Philip Johnson until now had been bounded by the invisible walls of Harlem. On this day he rode beyond, 
taking his camera with him across the George Washington Bridge and entered a playland for children. He was told to do only one thing, have a good time. After four days, it was over. He relinquished the camera, but was happy with the new friends he had made. We wondered whether the experience had changed Philip Johnson and found that it did not. He still talks like a boy and worries like a man. If I had three witches, the three things I would wish is all, all the drunkies wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't go to the bar restaurants and everybody would be friendly and the, the, all of the bars and the drunkies would, wouldn't do the things that they wouldn't do. The second one is that, um, that, that, that there wouldn't be no more wars in Vietnam and more people could make friends. And the third one is that people will learn to do more things right and they would mind their grown-ups and they'd go to school right and and on Sundays they go to church everybody will go to church it's a lot for a boy like me